Hello. Okay, today we have this presentation on goal programming and it is uh, part of the bigger presentation that is on optimization as a part of uh, goal programming as a part of operation and supply chain analytics within business analytics and goal programming lies within the gamut of optimization as a part of prescriptive analytics so it's more like prescriptive analytics and extension of uh, linear programming that we have discussed in the previous presentation okay so as agenda first we'll do introduce introduction to what is goal programming notified by gp then we look at how to formulate a goal programming and then we take example the rolls bakery and then we'll say how to explore big data with goal programming so let's start so vis-a-vis -vis, we have done in linear programming in linear programming we set uh, the objective and constraints uh, as a part of algebraic equation the whole business problem is formulated as algebraic equation and using the linear programming in in micro using the tool microsoft excel solver it was solved but now we today we look at goal programming and uh, in linear programming we had only one objective or one goal rather i would say and that goal is to maximize or minimize the or set it equal to a particular value the objective function so maximization or minimization or rather optimization of obje objective function was our one goal but in goal programming we have multiple goals and the constraint can be linear as well as non-linear so it could be linear programming or non-linear programming so goal programming is an extension of both of them and here what the value of objective function in one model becomes a new constraint until all optimization goals are so uh, what is the meaning of this statement will get clear to you as we move forward in this presentation so how to in a goal programming formulation the components have there is a minimization objective function a set of goal programming constraint an optional set of system constraint are there and as with linear programming and non-linear programming there is non-negativity constraint for functional and deviation variables what are these deviational variables it will be clarified as we move forward in the next slide so let's look at one example and then we see how we go ahead with it uh, let me uh, let's take the case of uh, rolls bakery and uh, they this bakery is making two type of products one is called dinner roll cases drc and sandwich roll cases src and the owner want to maximize the net profit total man machine hours per week are 150 hours machine hours working hours available and each product is produced in a lot of thousand cases so whenever the production happen it is happen in lots of 1000 cases and the products are different both the products they have different wholesale price processing time cost of raw material and market demand so let me show you first drc the wholesale price is 0.75 dollars for src the price is different the wholesale price is different processing time is different cost of raw material is also given to us then then we can calculate the net profit per lot so you can see it is just a number of lots yeah minus the cost so this is per lot the price that you get minus the labor cost minus the cost of raw material so you get the net profit 
as a price minus cost of raw material minus labor cost and the demand of course per week demand for cases is given here weekly demand in terms of lot it is three and four so how do how to show it in terms of linear programming so if you do linear programming so in linear programming the algebraic equations are we want to maximize the profit which is 400 is a profit for yeah, you can see the 400 profit for DRC which is x1 so this is x1 is number of lots of DRC product and x2 is number of lots of SRC and for one lot of DRC profit is 400 and for one lot of SRC the profit is 300 so total profit is 400 into number of lots of DRC plus 300 into number of lots of SRC and then subject to so this becomes our objective function and then subject to constraint so these these are our constraint first is for each drc it takes 10 machine hours for each src lot it takes 15 machine hours 15 hours of machine and total machine hours we want to keep per week less than equal to that is a constraint on machine hours second is demand so number of lots to be produced for drc has to be more than three and for src it has to be more than four and this is non-negativity constraint both production of both the product should be more than equal to zero so these becomes our constraint subject to this constraint we trying to maximize or optimize this particular function so this is a simple linear programming now in goal yeah so now we are in goal programming the same thing is provided with the new set of goals now the goals are given what is the priority one goal so remember these word priority one and then goal one company should not produce more than two lots over the weekly demand of each product which is three and four so they should provide not more than five and six priority two which is goal two company should meet the weekly demand for both product so it should be more than three and four priority three goal three should utilize available man machine hours so it should be more than 150 more than equal to 150 goal four priority four should make maximum possible net profit so here the useful thing in goal programming we have new definitions one is aspiration level aspiration level indicates a desire or acceptable level of objective and the difference between the aspiration level and the actual accomplishment how much that goal is achieved that is called goal deviation and in order of importance of achieving each goal this is called goal priority so in goal programming formulation we have we come up with in addition to linear programming we come up with a new set of decision variables and each decision variable we call they represent underachievement or overachievement of given goal and they can they are added to represent goals that are not currently represented by existing constraint so they are added to the existing constraint in the lp model and the objective function in the lp model decision maker need to incorporate the deviation variable so these are called new set of decision variables called deviation variables they are also beside constraint they are also incorporated into goal programming objective functions and into the newly and modified constraint so let's see what is the step-by-step -step method of goal programming methodology so step one we formulate the problem as a simple linear programming model step two we define the deviation variables for each goal then we write 
goal programming and system constraint so, so earlier there was a we all the objective function and it was done for linear programming model now we write goal programming objective function and system constraint they include also the deviation variables and then this non negativity constraint for functional deviation variable it stays like linear programming non linear programming and then determine the variables to be minimized in the objective functions and they write the objective function with the priorities of our goals so let's look at the same problem with the linear programming this is a linear programming equation new linear the new with the new constraint and the new goal so again maximize the net profit which is same as before subject to constraint of machine hours more than three SRC more than four and this is a new constraint DRC lots has to be less than five SRC lot has to be less than six and this is non negativity constraint same as before now we for based on our goals we had four goals and first goal was company should not produce more than two lots for the weekly so we come up with now we come up with the deviation variable for the goal one suppose s4 is number of lots over produced over the aspiration level of a five s5 is under produced from the aspiration level of five that is for the drc s5 is over produced over the aspiration level of six for src s5 is negative deviation variable that is under produced when aspiration level is six lots for src for goal two again we come up with a positive deviation value and negative deviation value so it could be company should meet the weekly demand which is three and four s2 is over over produced s2 minus is under produced from the expression of three s3 plus is over produced from the aspiration level of four s3 minus is under produced from the aspiration level of four similarly for goal three we also get the deviation variable goal three is company should utilize available machine hours of 150 hours so s1 is a deviation variable over utilization so deviation variable will be more than 150 hours s1 is underutilized machine hours or when the aspiration level is 150 so both deviation on the positive and negative sides they are now represented by additional variables for goal 4 also we come up with positive and negative deviation variable s6 plus is over achievement side and s6 minus is under achievement and then now we write, rewrite the algebraic equation for the goal programming so you can see here earlier it was 10 x1 plus 15 x2 less than equal to 150 hours now now we have done is we have added the underachievement or negative deviation and then subtracted the overachievement or positive deviation and when we do this this thing become all the equation you see in the goal programming they become equal to same thing for the constraint one x1 plus s2 minus plus minus s2 plus they become equal to three x2 plus s3 minus minus s3 plus equal to four here it becomes equal to five here it becomes equal to six and then it here it is on the profit side 400 x1 plus 300 x2 plus s6 minus minus s6 is equal to 4800 so all the equations which are earlier written linear programming they are now written in form of so they become the new equations for goal programming now let's look uh, and of course there's a non negativity constraint for functional and so all our decision variables x1 x2 
and our deviation variables they all have to be more than equal to zero so non-negativity constraint is added now we're going to determine the value to be minimized in the objective function so we have constraint one from step three so to minimize the positive deviation, actual number of machine hours utilized need to be less than 150 hours that means the number of machine hours utilized will not exceed 150 hours so list of deviation variable include an objective function of goal programming so we have to now write the objective function of goal programming so goal one the deviation variables of interest are s4 and s5 plus goal two the deviation variable of interest are s2 minus and s3 minus and goal three is yeah and goal six is goal four is s6 minus let me see what is for goal three goal three is s1 okay S1 plus is goal 3 that is of interest to us. Now we're going to write the objective function and then we assign the priorities. So these priorities are normally given in the ratio. Suppose uh, 300 is to 220 is to 10. So that means this is 15 times 15. So this, suppose we take it 1, then it will go 1 is to 2 is to 30. So these are the relative ratios. We can give them numbers, appropriate numbers. So the priorities can be assigned in terms of numerics. And now we're gonna write the objective function again. And here we only take care of the deviation variables. So we, this is something that we want to ma minimize, like 300 this is a priority. And S4 and S5 are in goal one s2 and s3 they both are in the goal 3 so both are given priority 3 and and then s1 plus was something of interest in goal 3 and then priority was 20 so 20 s1 plus in goal 4 s6 minus was of interest and the priority was given as 10. so this is something that this is the something that total deviation that we would like to minimize So the first deviation variable to be reduced even becomes zero are those that are associated with the largest value of contribution. So now the optimization algorithm will try to we now to minimize the value of Z here and uh, largest value. So they, they first try to reduce it, make it to zero. These something those are for whom the contribution coefficient are quite high. So let's see how what will happen so now our whole equations this is our objective function new objective function and as told before these are our now constraints and then non-negativity constraint and when we solve it with the solver and we get a solution so it says that under these goals the bakery should have 7.5 lots of DRC and 6 lots of SRC. So it is definitely less than 6. And here the goal 1 is not getting met. But this is being met. The value of deviation variable indicate whether decision variable has reached the stated goal so value of s1 result in 15 that shows that this is something i'm reading the results to you but i'll just show you in the excel sheet so the value of s1 plus is 15 it shows that optimal production of roles required an additional 15 hours produced 15 hours to produce total is so 150 was the machine hours but actual we were taking 165 so we see a positive deviation on the positive side in the final result similarly s4 positive is 2.5 so it shows that rather than 5 we are now producing it goal 
of producing 5 now there is a deviation on the positive side of 2.5 and we are producing 7.5 lots of drc but this is the more op is the optimal solution optimized solution that meets all our goals now let's look at it from now we are gonna look at it from the excel how does it look in excel and here we are in excel sheet so the same problem here is shown in microsoft excel so you can see drc the wholesale price per case is 0.75 so there are 1000 cases in one lot so lot is 750 for drc for src the wholesale price 650 processing times are given cost raw material per lot is given so profit of course i just sh shared with you earlier how to calculate that profit per lot demand and three and four this is the weekly demand minimum that has to be met so now we set uh, the whole thing here we put some extra chart in like for drc the same thing as used as before but here we say achievement level and the aspiration level i told you about aspiration level for minimum aspiration level for maximum to account for the new constraint and these are the priorities so these are different deviation variables which are set up here i'm going to share this excel sheet with the, uh, some of the viewers as well so they can see how i worked out problem in detail these are priorities the weights assigned 300 300 to both priority 1 and 2 and 20 to priority 3 and 10 for priority 4 and here you can see in the objective functions of course we are trying to 300 and then we say how much is new objective function that is trying to figure out this value so these yellows are the one that we are trying to find out using the goal programming all the deviations and then of course how many lots this is the key consideration is how many lots to produce so let's see how does this thing look up so we have to use a tool called solver so people who don't know how to use solver then you can go to file in microsoft excel go to options and then you go to add-ins once you go to add-in it will say microsoft Excel. you go to go. then you select excel add-in so microsoft solver add-in and you click ok so in the data tab in microsoft excel you get this tool called solver so we click here and then now you can see what we are trying to do is we are trying to maximize a function called net profit uh, that is c24 that should be somewhere in the bottom yeah here this is our new objective function that we are trying to minimize how do we formulate it let me quickly click here and show you this is a sum product of all of them yeah and multiplied by their priorities so we know how much some some priorities we have set up zero some priorities we have set up 300 this is as a part of setting our objective function and multiplication of the values of uh, these deviation deviation uh, variable multiplied by the priority so that becomes part of our objective function so that is our objective function by changing the variable of course we change first variable we are changing is how many not x1 and x2 and then we also look at c12 to c13 what are the values of these deviation variable and x1 and x2 our dis original decision variables and then we are putting all the constraint that i showed you in my powerpoint so all the constraint are set up here the constraint and how to 
okay here i can actually Okay, and then by adding constraint, actually I can add constraint like this, or I can, you know, if there's a constraint that I want to modify, I can also modify it. And then of course I make all these constraint non-negatives. Solving the simple linear programming is because the uh, equations are linear and relationship are linear in nature. And then I was, of course, I'm trying to minimize the objective function. I click on solve. And then I say answer. So you see, when I solve it, you can see my I get answer rep answer reports and it shows that x1 becomes original value was 1050 it remains at that I get x1 becomes 7.5 lots x2 becomes 6 lot and then x1 positive becomes 15 x2 positive becomes 4.5 S4 positive becomes 2.5 and all else becomes 0. So this is the solution that I get and this thing is also clear in the Microsoft Excel sheet. So we're coming back. Yeah, this I just explained to you. So this is the solution that we get. So just a recap. In goal programming, first we step is uh, step one. We formulate the problem as simple linear programming or non-linear programming model. Step two, we define the deviation variable for each goal. Suppose we may have one or two or more goals given for each goal we have deviation set define the deviation variable then we write the goal programming and system constraint add non-negative constraint for functional and deviation variable and then we determine the variables to be minimized in the objective function and we write the objective function with priorities and then we use use microsoft excel solver tool to optimize and do the statistical calculation and give us the values for different decision variables and deviation variables okay so i hope you like this presentation and this will be useful for people who want to know what is goal programming and how it is used in optimization as a part of prescriptive analytics. Thank you very much.